Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Now a lot of you may already know of the existence of the latest One Piece data book which is entitled Vivia Card. For those of you who don't, it's quite a unique data book actually. It's essentially a folder collection of cards, Vivia Cards if you will, that detail a particular character and give us a ton of information on them, most of which we knew but some that we certainly did not. So it functions as a sort of collectible data book, with new packs of cards being released on a fairly regular basis. I've actually got a few of them, they're quite cool and I am very very keen to collect the whole set, but the reason why I bring this up is not for sheer curiosity alone, because there are some really fascinating things revealed in these cards, and even though I might be a little late to the party, I do think it's very much worth going through them, especially some of the later packs, which contain stupidly important pieces of information that I think, because it's in data book form, is going to go completely under the radar of most fans. So today, we're here to begin this journey by examining part of the starter set. Quite notably, this set includes the straw hats, but I won't be going through them, because there's nothing really in there that we don't already know. It's just a lot of basic information. But for the characters we are delving into, today I would like to credit the Library of O'Hara for their phenomenal effort in translating them, and there are links to their website in the description below, should you wish to go and take a look for yourself. But let's begin going through the Vivia card starter pack, commencing with none other than the Pirate King, Goal D. Roger. In regards to new information, we first and foremost have his height, which is a massive 274 centimeters tall. That is more than the tallest living human being, who sits at 251 centimeters, or 8 foot 2 for our American friends. His blood type is S, whatever that means in the crazy one piece world and his favorite food is sake and shark meat. Fascinating combination there. I mean we probably could have guessed about the sake given that we saw him indulging himself with Mr. Whitebeard in a flashback. It is also confirmed that Roger has or I guess had a bounty but it is stated that it is unknown. But the most interesting information we have regarding Roger is the specific nature of his timeline. Something I've always been very curious about. Apparently he entered the Grand Line 28 years ago and fought the Battle of Ed War against Shiki a mere one year after that. Which is kind of madness. So think about that. After only a year of being in the Grand Line, he'd managed to locate an ancient weapon, oh and by this time he'd also had a fair chunk of his crew, given that Shanks and Buggy were both members by the time of the Ed War, as was Crocus actually. Oh, which means that Roger had well and truly contracted his fatal disease within a year of being in the Grand Line, or probably actually before even venturing into it. That's pretty rough. But two years later he found the One Piece and well, the rest is history. Next up is Mr. Shanks, and we learn that he was a mere 11 years old when he joined the Roger Pirates, which is insanity. That would have made him 14 years old at most when the One Piece was found, and 15 when Roger was executed. It's weird to think that he very potentially set foot on Raftel at such a young age, especially considering Luffy didn't even set out on his journey till he was 17. And actually, you know what? That would have made Shanks 15 when he founded the Red Hair Pirates as well. Such a young entrepreneur. There's a little more timeline stuff here as well that actually places Shanks becoming a Yonko prior to meeting Luffy, which if that's true is incredible, but it also does make note that it is unknown when he became a Yonko, so it's a bit confusing and weird. As if it was placed there with a giant question mark because the important event had to go somewhere. So I personally wouldn't start screaming from the rooftops that Shanks was already a Yonko at the start of the series, but it's an idea worth considering. Shanks is a much more reasonable 199 centimeter tall man with the blood type of XF, and it is confirmed that he has observation hockey, which I don't think anyone ever doubted. He's just never displayed it before, and here it is. Moving on, we have Lucky Roo, who is from South Blue apparently, and stands much taller than Shanks at 241 centimeters, but possesses a blood type of a mere F. His favorite food is a chicken drumstick, which should have been quite obvious, but apparently these days Lucky Roo is on a diet, which is intriguing, but the most fascinating tidbit about Sir Roo is that he is the one who obtained the Gomu Gomu no Mi by stealing it from an enemy ship. Other than that, we finally learn Lucky Roo's age, which is 35, making him 23 at the beginning of the series. Now for Yasop, a character I quite legitimately forget exists a lot of the time. This was probably assumed by most of us, but it states that his official position is the sniper of the Red Hair Pirates, the same role as his son Usopp, and furthermore Yasop's favorite food is C seasonal fish. Once again, the same as his son. Yasop is currently 47, making him 35 at the beginning of the series, standing at 183 centimeters tall, and with a blood type of S, once again, the same as Usopp. Rather interestingly though, it states that Garp was supposed to tell Usopp about Yasop during the return to Water 7 arc, but that didn't happen. I suspect because he was still segregating himself from the crew, and thus never got to meet Garp. Oh my, Ben Beckman. This dude is 50 years old, 15 years the senior of Lucky Roo, and 11 years the senior of Shanks, who is 39. At first I went, wow, what a gap, but you know what? Luffy has a crewmate who is 71 years older than him, so all of a sudden it doesn't seem like such a huge discrepancy. It is, however, officially confirmed that Ben Beckman is the vice captain of the Red Hair Pirates. There's not a huge amount more of great interest for him. He's from North Blue, 206 enemies tall, has the blood type X, and his favorite food is kamaboko, which is a type of cured surimi, like a processed seafood product. 
thing. I don't know, look, I'd, I'd never heard of it either. Next up is the ever lovely Makino, who is 31 years old, which makes her 19 at the beginning of the series. She is 166 centimeters tall, although there is a particular note that this is without her quote unquote massive shoes, which you know, I don't think I've ever noticed Makino's shoes. And going through my image library, this was the only picture I actually found of said shoes, which don't look so huge, but when you go back in the manga, oh my God. God, they are massive. Why, just why do you need shoes that big, Makino? I think they legitimately shrank them in the anime because they were just so absurd here. But her favorite food is juice and cake, and she is also very good around children, the latter of which we already knew through her interactions with Ace, Luffy, and Sabo. Plus the fact that she is a proud mother herself these days. All right, now for Higuma the bear. We all remember him, right? He's the OG dick of One Piece. And we now know that he was 46 years old at the time of being consumed by the Lord of the Coast. His favorite foods were sake, wild herbs, and somewhat predictably, bear meat. May you rest in pieces, sir. Because here comes Kobe. The biggest thing for me here is that it confirms his canon spelling is with a K rather than with a C, so I'll have to relent and update my One Piece 101 thumbnail at some point. But Mr. Kobe is 167 centimeters tall, so slightly shorter than me, actually, with a blood type of F, which is the same type as a certain Monkey D. Luffy. Very notably, this is a card for pre-time skip Kobe, so it highlights that he has observation haki and says that his rank is master Master Chief Petty Officer, which is no longer true as he is a captain post time skip. Kobe's favorite foods are apparently potato butter as well as Rika's onigiri. It doesn't state whether it's fresh onigiri or onigiri that has been marinated in dirt. I suppose it could be both, so long as it's made by Rika, which is very sweet and a nice callback to the events of Romance Dawn. Then there's Kobe's former overlord, Alvida. There's not a huge amount of interest here. She's 27 years old, 198 centimeters tall, hails from East Blue, has a blood type of S, and her favorite food is berries that are good for her skin. Not that any of that should matter though, because if her skin develops any form of imperfection, then we surely just slip it right off with the ever cool Subi Subi no Mi. El Meppo is also listed here as pre-time skip only, but apparently he's 22, making him a 20 year old dick when he first appeared in the series. Which you know, I honestly thought that he was much, much younger than that. But hey, that's what a lack of mental maturity will do for a person. His favorite food is a luxurious steak and caviar, very predictable there. Although I would be interested to see if that changes post-time skip actually, reflecting a change in his personality. But otherwise, Helmeppo is 179 centimeters tall with a blood type of S. And finally for this video, Helmeppo's papa, Captain Morgan is 44 years old, making him exactly Helmeppo's age when he had him. Although he is significantly taller, standing at a towering 285 centimeters high, making him the tallest person we've seen in this video actually, with a blood type of XF and his favorite food is hot cuisine. So a fan of high cooking Mr. Morgan is, which I'm sure he gets plenty of uh, in jail. But that pretty much does it for this first edition of the One Piece Vivia card. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items, with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on this wonderful information. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.